Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing 10 of the best new fragrances for spring 2021. I've been waiting patiently on one package and it finally arrived because I was focused on creating a list of fresh fragrances. And when I say fresh, I mean new. So there are a handful of exceptions, but the majority of this list launched in 2021. I know it gets kind of boring hearing about the same fragrances over and over again. Of course, there are some fresh florals. It's a spring fragrance video, but I also included some great date night options. The very first fragrance on the list is Delina La Rose from Parfum de Marly. This is the latest interpretation of the best-selling Delina perfume. If you're familiar, I would describe Delina La Rose as a softer, fresher, more aquatic version of the original. But even that's probably simplifying way too much. Both fragrances are beautiful, but they are very different, especially when you smell them side by side. The first time I smelled this fragrance, I just knew this would be the perfect springtime fragrance. The top notes include Lishi, Pear, and Bergamot Essence. The middle notes are Turkish Rose, Peony, and Transparent Flowers. A base of soft wood, white musk, and vetiver. The original Delina has Lishi and Rhubarb in the top, but this new combination of the Lishi, Pear, and Bergamot it gives it this really delicious, almost juicy fruit burst right off the top. It is very fresh, watery, like you are taking a bite into a fresh pear. And the floral component actually comes later on. It's really interesting. I'm gonna use the blotters today. That is beautiful. Right away, it's just sweet and fruity, really feminine. And as it dries down, you start to get the transparent flowers and the peony, and there's a little hint of rose in there as well. For the Delina lover, I think this is the perfect addition to your fragrance wardrobe. Of course, if you don't like the original Delina, I don't think you're going to like this. It's possible because as I mentioned, they are very different. But I think if you love Delina, you will love adding this to your collection because it gives you an option. Chances are you are saving Delina for evenings, weekends, special occasions. Maybe not, maybe you're splashing yourself every day. But I think this is the perfect complement because it is a little bit lighter, a little bit more fresh and aquatic. So I think it lends itself really nicely to daytime use. This could be your daytime Delina and then the original could be your evening Delina if you wanted. I've always thought of Delina as the perfect bridal fragrance, a great wedding day scent. I don't know how many weddings we're going to have in 2021. Hopefully way more than we had in 2020 as people canceled and postponed. I think we will have some weddings and celebrations. But if you were to be a bride in 2021, I would recommend Delina La Rose if you're getting married in spring, summer, a hotter climate, you know, the hotter months. This could also be a great bridal fragrance as well, or maybe even just bridal shower, special occasion, special brunch, birthday, something really glamorous during the day. It would make a beautiful Mother's Day gift as well. Mother's Day is coming up very soon, which brings me to a quick little note, because once again, I've partnered with Parfum de Marley to create a coupon code for you guys. This was so popular the last time around when we did it, and I've received a lot of requests lately. So we do have a code. If you check out directly from the Parfum de Marley website, which I will link down below in the description box, you enter the code Erin Nicole at checkout where it says promo code and you'll receive a little gift with purchase. So we decided on the new Delina shower gel. You get this mini version of the new ancillary that just launched as well as the Delina discovery set. When you open it up, there's this beautiful card inside. It tells you all about the different fragrances and you will get a sample of Delina exclusive, the original Delina, and Delina La Rose. So that way you can try all three fragrances and you can also layer with your shower gel. It is a gift with purchase. The purchase of any full size fragrance it can be whatever fragrance you desire. And just so you're aware, the code will be active starting April 18th and it will go through May 10th. So you have several weeks to take advantage if you're interested. I believe Mother's Day falls on May 9th this year. The next spring perfume is very new. These just launched at Sephora and I am incredibly grateful to Nest for sending over three scents complimentary. And it's not really a traditional perfume, it's a perfume oil. This one is my favorite. This is the Turkish Rose Perfume Oil from Nest. 
absolutely amazing. I kind of thought, wow, that box is so beautiful. I love Rose. I'm sure I'm going to really like it. I did not anticipate loving it as much as I do. And the first scent that came to mind was Delina. And Delina does have Turkish Rose. But this is the bottle. It is very beautiful. Comes with a dropper for the oil. I love the pink transparent glass. It's a minimal design. I think it looks very clean, very pretty. It says, wander through Turkey's legendary rose fields with this nourishing perfume oil featuring notes of rose, black plum, and hints of saffron warmed by blonde woods. The Turkish rose extract is blended with baobab oil for a formula that melts into your skin while leaving behind a long-lasting fragrance. The roses at the heart of the fragrance are harvested during May and June only. The rosebuds are handpicked at dawn when the flower is most fragrant. It says massage a few drops of the oil onto your arms, legs, decollete, anywhere on your body that you want to indulge with nourishment in a highly concentrated expression of exquisite fragrance. You can wear the perfume oil alone, just use a dropper full, massage it around your arms and be done for the day or you could layer with another fragrance. I love the idea of this perfume oil paired with a Delina or a Delina La Rose, and it will help with the longevity of your fragrance. It is so beautiful. It's kind of sweet. It's like a sweet, fresh garden of roses. It is really beautiful. If you love rose, I think you will love this. It's a very sweet modern rose. It's not what you might expect it to be. If I didn't know it was a Turkish rose perfume oil, I would think it was its own unique fragrance. And it's a dry oil. It absorbs right into the skin. It doesn't leave your skin feeling greasy, any sort of residue. It's so nice. And you just have the light hint of the fragrance. The black plum makes sense because it has that sweetness, almost a fruity juiciness paired with the rose, it's so nice. I plan to do a more in-depth video on fragrance layering later on, so let me know down in the comment section if that's something that interests you and you'd like to see. Next, I have a new launch from the brand Floral Street. This is also available at Sephora. This fragrance blew me away. It is called Arizona Bloom. And you just look at this bottle, and you hear the name, and you think, wow, this is going to be bright and maybe citrusy and floral. And it is, but it isn't. It is such a beautiful fragrance. This knocked my socks off the first time I smelled this. And they were kind enough to send this to me complimentary. Arizona Bloom is described as a warm and spicy fragrance. It's a warm and sweet gourmand with keynotes of coconut, jasmine, and salted musk. Such a fine mist. And it does say second skin, so I think this is going to sit a little bit closer. I've worn the fragrance a couple times, but I have yet to wear it out. I just don't get out that much, unfortunately. So I haven't really been able to test it in a real world scenario, but it's just so beautiful. Now I'm getting the coconut. I, lo I love coconut. If you don't like coconut, you will probably not like this fragrance, but that's also probably why it spoke to me so much. You get the salted musk. It's almost a sea salt like ocean seawater with the coconut. It's like a pina colada by the ocean with a warm salted caramel musk finish. It's really interesting, very beautiful, shocked me. I love this perfume. I think this would be perfect for a date night or a day date, but it would be more casual date night, like nothing really dressy, fancy, but if you were going somewhere a bit more casual, this would be perfect. And this is the fragrance I was waiting for to create today's video. This is the latest launch from Tom Ford. It's Soleil Brulon in this beautiful gold bottle. It looks so luxurious, so opulent. I have not been impressed with many of the recent Tom Ford launches. In fact, I don't think I've really loved one of his perfume launches since last year last spring with Rose Brick. When I first smelled this fragrance at a local Saks, I thought, finally, this is what I have come to expect from Tom Ford, a fragrance that is mind-blowing, so beautiful. It falls into the amber woody fragrance category. It has top notes of bergamot, mandarin orange, and pink pepper. Middle notes are orange blossom and honey. 
which you can definitely pick up on the honey. And then base notes are woody notes, amber, resin, leather, and vetiver. Leather is like the signature DNA in the majority of Tom Ford fragrances, which is why they all sort of smell similar. Not all of them, but there is a good chunk of fragrances from Tom Ford, especially in the Private Blend collection, that smell kind of the same. This is very different from those. And it is part of Private Blend, so it is unisex. I think it, this one leans a bit more feminine. Could a man wear this fragrance? Absolutely but I do think this one is for the ladies. And there aren't very many for the ladies. Rose Prick, Cafe Rose, maybe Jasmine Rouge, Soleil Blanc, I would say, and then Soleil Brulant. All of the others are truly unisex or they're just very masculine. So let's give it a try. Ooh. You know, now that I have it on the brain, I do think this would be unisex almost has a lavender extreme fresh mintiness right off the top. I think the note that makes you go, mmm, is the honey in the middle. It is very apparent whenever you smell the fragrance, even right away. I feel like you get a little bit of that sweetness and that, I don't know, how do you describe the taste of honey? It's not really creamy, but it has a smoothness to it. You definitely get that right away. I think the bottle, this reminds me of summer evenings. It's a bit sensual. I think Soleil Blanc is kind of the daytime, spending the day on your luxury yacht if you're Tom Ford or by the pool, by the beach. But then Soleil Brulant is like the evening, very intense, warm, sensual version. It must have been the pink pepper that gave it that bite, almost a fresh spiciness, like a mintiness right away. As it continues to dry down, it just gets better and better. So beautiful. I tried this at Saks. I sprayed it on my arm because I loved it so much. I wanted to see what it was like on the skin. Wore it for a few hours later that evening, kept checking in. I didn't think it was as long wearing as the woman tried to tell me it would be. I find that to be the case with most Tom Ford fragrances. It is so unfortunate. I know that is a common complaint is that they don't have a lot of longevity. This one is right there with the rest. I don't think there's anything that really stands out about the longevity. It just arrived, so I'll continue to wear it and maybe I'll change my mind and I can update you guys. I know Sephora has their sale and this is available at Sephora. I purchased mine from Selfridges. Because if you sign up for their U.S. shipping membership program, it's $50. Depending on how much you buy, especially if you buy a lot of fragrance, a lot of luxury beauty where it's shipping from Europe, it's more expensive here, so you actually save money in the long run. I believe I picked this up for maybe $270 from Selfridges. This retails for $350 here. It's the uber luxury price point. Ridiculous, I know, for a 50 milliliter bottle. If you don't have that shipping membership, I think it's probably better to just go ahead and pay for it, pick it up from Selfridges, and you'd still save a little bit of money. And it doesn't take a long time to ship either. Usually I'll receive packages in just a couple of days, so it's not like you have to wait weeks and weeks for international shipping. Just throwing that out there because it is a lot of money to drop for fragrance. If you can get it 20% off at Sephora, that's amazing. If you're looking for a discount or a place to get this cheaper, check Selfridges. Next, we're talking about one of my favorite new fragrance launches in 2021. This is Reckless Pour Femme from Roja. This is another perfect special occasion type of fragrance, just like Soleil Brulant. Now, this does have the potential to become one of your favorite fragrances, one of the best fragrances in your collection, because it is so unique and so special. But the trick is you really have to let this dry down on your skin. The first time I smelled it, I really liked it, but it wasn't a love at first sniff sort of situation, but as it dried down, I just became addicted to this perfume. And that is one of the descriptors. I would say this is addictive, intoxicating. It reminds me a bit of Hypnotic Poison. It has this sweetness, this yumminess. It is so delicious. I think this would be perfect for a date night, an evening out. 
Not a daytime perfume in my opinion, but something really special. It's categorized as a floral fragrance. It has top notes of mandarin orange, orange and bergamot. Middle notes are neroli, geranium, may rose and jasmine. Base notes are vanilla, coriander, pink pepper, cinnamon, sandalwood, benzoin, styrax and musk. Oof. I just love how fine that mister is. Makes it seem even more elegant. Mmm. It's sort of airy at first. You get that burst of citrus. But then it's kind of sweet and just makes your mouth water. It's so beautiful. I really wouldn't consider this to be a floral fragrance. It's not what comes to mind. When I think of a springtime floral, this is not that. You can kind of pick up on the floral notes, of course, but really I just get this syrupy sweetness, almost like a hard candy. And then as it dries down, you get the vanilla, the cinnamon, the sandalwood. It's more of a sexy, seductive type of fragrance. It's not something I would choose to wear on a daily basis. I wouldn't wear this to the office. That's just me personally definitely for an evening out. I feel like you have to get dressed up to wear this fragrance and it does have lasting power. It has projection. People are going to smell you. They're going to turn heads whenever you walk in the room. I think this is definitely a compliment fishing fragrance. I'm going to follow that up with another fragrance from Roja. This has become one of my favorite fragrances to wear. This is the first exception to my new rule. So this did not launch in 2021. It's Elixir Pour Femme. Just a beautiful fragrance. This is so special. I love wearing this and I can't stop. This is what I've been grabbing lately and I, I love it. Elixir launched in 2019, so it's not that old. It's categorized as an amber floral. It has bergamot in the top. Middle notes are rose de may, raspberry, peach, violet, heliotrope, geranium, lily of the valley, and jasmine. Base notes are musk, cashmere wood, vanilla, orris, violet leaf, ambret, sandalwood, cedar, and cinnamon. This is another one that has the potential to become your favorite fragrance, maybe your signature scent, one of the best in your collection. Beautiful. Oh, it's so good. I think this fragrance is a showstopper. Now, it's not really heavy, intense, dark. There's nothing that's really in your face about it. But it's just the composition is so perfect. This fragrance speaks to my heart. <laughs> the first time I smelled this, I just knew it was love at first sniff. I get the peach and the raspberry. It's fruity, but it's not the traditional fruity notes that you kind of smell in a lot of the more popular designer fragrances. So it's somewhat familiar, but it's different. And it almost has a powdery quality, and I don't typically lean towards powdery fragrances it's not so much powder that it's in your face baby powder but it's enough that it elevates the fragrance and you think wow this is very elegant this is the type of fragrance that a very refined sophisticated very wealthy woman would wear that's just kind of the mood it evokes i also think elixir would be a beautiful bridal fragrance it is that special because it's soft and feminine and ferocious at the same time. And it's ferocious in a soft feminine way. It's just so good. I feel like this is the type of fragrance that if I could create something in my head that would be the perfect fragrance, it would probably be something similar to this. I just really like it. <laughs> Can you tell? And it is so perfect for spring. This could be a year-round fragrance, especially if you did want to adopt it as your signature scent. But I do think if I had to put a season on it, spring. Nice. Here's another new launch in 2021. This is from Bulgari. It's called Fantasia Veneta. And I did a full dedicated video on this fragrance. I will link it down below in case you missed it and you'd like to check it out. It's very interesting because this launched as part of the Allegra collection. There are five fragrances and Bulgari also launched five magnifying essences is what they're calling them. So you can spray one of the essences with each of the perfume to give it a personalized twist. 
It was inspired by an Italian festa of the five fragrances in the Allegra collection. This is sort of the spicy, playful, the flirty date night fragrance. Keynotes include red peach, Indonesian patchouli, Turkish, and Bulgarian rose. It is such a bold fragrance. It is so nice. It's kind of spicy. Not what you think of when you think of spring fragrance, but I think this would be perfect for an evening, for a date night. It's not too heavy, even though it is a bit stronger, a bit bolder. It's kind of unexpected for spring, but I like it. When I first smelled this fragrance, and I couldn't say it in my dedicated video because it was sponsored by the brand, and I didn't want to talk about other fragrances, but of course that is very helpful, especially if you haven't smelled the fragrance and you're just sort of listening to reviews, watching videos online. It smells so similar, at least it reminds me of Portrait of a Lady. And I just pulled up the notes because I was just kind of curious what's in it. Rose, check. Red fruits, check. Incense, patchouli. It's still its own unique scent. I'm not saying they're the same but there are similarities. You know, they live in the same neighborhood. They are distant relatives, maybe second or third cousins, if you will. But I think if you like Portrait of a Lady, you will probably really like Fantasia Veneta as well. Fragrance number eight isn't new, new. It is new-ish. It launched in 2020, which is good enough for me. This is Penhaligon's The Favorite. It is so perfect for spring. The name, the bottle just tells you everything you need to know about this perfume. It has top notes of violet, mandarin, orange, and freesia. Middle notes are mimosa, iris, and jasmine sandback. Base notes are musk, ambroxan, and sandalwood. <sighs> mm, it is so pretty. It reminds me a lot of cherry blossom. I know that's not one of the notes and maybe that is not in the fragrance at all, but that is what I smell whenever I first smell the fragrance. If you like cherry blossom, I think you'll really like the opening of the favorite. Just the perfect floral. It is so floral in your face. It smells like you're walking through a garden or a greenhouse. It's very fresh. It's bright, it's happy. Kind of reminds me of beige from Chanel. Elegant, so soft and sophisticated. You look at this bottle and it is just the most feminine thing you have ever seen with the pink velvet bow. The scent itself matches the bottle perfectly. So if you like this, I think you will really like this. My next choice is another new fragrance that kind of sits on the fence between spring and summer. I think it would be perfect for both seasons. And I recently discovered this in one of the deluxe perfume sampler sets from Sephora. I am doing a dedicated video sometime very soon, but I didn't want to wait to tell you about this fragrance because the sale is still going on. So if you're interested in the set or you just want to check it out, it is worth doing so because it's always a great value, but then you'll save 20, 15, or 10% off. So it's e an even better value to pick it up now. This is from Versace. This is Dylan Turquoise. It's their latest interpretation of the classic Dylan Blue fragrance. It's aquatic, it's fresh, citrusy. It is so yummy and delicious, and I think it is very versatile. You can kind of wear this anytime. It's categorized as floral fruity. It has top notes of lemon, mandarin, orange, and pink pepper. Middle notes are guava, freesia, jasmine, and cassis. Base notes are musk, clear wood, and cedar. It is so invigorating because you get so much citrus right, right away. It's kind of spicy and interesting. Just fresh, just takes you to the ocean really beautiful. I would describe this as more of an aquatic fragrance. It's kind of an aquatic fruity floral, similar to a Giorgio Armani Aqua de Joao. What's funny is that those are the only two aquatic fragrances in my personal collection and I discovered both of them from the perfume sampler sets at Sephora. It's one of the greatest things about them is that you can discover new fragrances. 
I'm not typically a citrus person, but there's enough spiciness, a little zestiness that I really like. This is for those people who just like something clean, fresh, a little light fragrance for the day, but nothing too heavy. This could be worn outside if you're running errands, if you're going to the gym and you like to wear a perfume, this would be perfect. It is an eau de toilette, so it is a bit softer. It's not going to be a really heavy fragrance. And here we have the very last fragrance on the list. This did not launch in 2021, but it is still relatively new. It's new to my collection, but I want to say it launched in 2020, maybe 2019. It's certainly not old. This is Bond Number no. 9 Tribeca. I had to save this for last because it's such a powerhouse fragrance. It really sits in a league of its own. This and maybe a handful of other fragrances from my collection, it is so special. And I'm so thankful, so grateful to you guys because you are the ones who recommended this to me and said, you have to smell Tribeca, it's amazing. What do you think about this? This is my go-to fragrance. I tried it once, immediately fell in love. It would be amazing year round, but since it is newer to my collection, I find myself gravitating towards this fragrance right now. Keynotes include Cacao Absolute, Green Hazelnut, Jasmine Sandback Absolute, Cedarwood, Ambroxan, Moss, and Caramel. I'm so glad I added this to my collection. <sighs> Heavenly. I am also so glad I resisted the urge to pick up the limited edition Swarovski Crystal version. So beautiful. It was kind of blinged out packaging and then it had little Swarovski crystals around the circle. If I really wanted to, I could probably turn this into a craft project and do that myself. I saved myself an extra $100 and I came back to reality. Some fragrances are just worth it. They're so expensive, but when you spray them, when you wear them, as soon as you smell them, you just know you have no regrets and they are worth the money. That's how I feel about Tribeca. When I smell this fragrance, I just sort of melt. The best way to describe Tribeca is cotton candy. Of course, it's more complex and there are so many different notes and it's far more intricate than that. But really the main takeaway, whenever you smell the fragrance, you're gonna think, oh wow, cotton candy. It's very sweet, creamy. You definitely get the caramel, but it has that addictive, yummy, makes your mouth water type of smell to it. It's really good. Tribeca might be the longest wearing fragrance I have in my collection. It is really impressive how strong it stays hours later. If you've never smelled Tribeca and you love sweet gourmands, warm, caramel, cotton candy type of fragrances, you have to try it. This could become your new favorite fragrance. It really is top of the list in that category. And that completes my list of new favorite fragrances for spring. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. Now it's your turn to leave a comment. Let us know your favorite spring fragrances. If there's a new favorite, something that you've been wearing a lot lately, let us know down below in the comment section. I always love reading through all of your suggestions, all of your favorites too. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.